Welcome to Ear Biscuits, where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. What, what, is it not a podcast anymore? I knew I wasn't saying <laughs> something right. Welcome to Ear Biscuits, a podcast. The, I mean, typically it's the, the podcast. Po- I, if you want to change it, I'm open. I mean, do we I'm really need to, to say it. that? I mean, if you don't, <laughs> if you, if yeah. you, if you need to be told this is a podcast, this is podcast. I don't know if. Uh, Let's go with it. Let's roll with it. If you're invited. And I'm Rhett. <laughs> <laughs> this week at the round table of dim lighting, uh, I'm going to be telling you about a little experience I had, unexpected experience that I had this weekend that I was fond of. Okay. Recounting that to you. And also uh, talking a little bit about this new piece of technology that I don't know how to feel about yet. We can process that together. Okay. And I have... The best party idea. The best you. party idea. I experienced a certain type of party. Uh huh. Um, and I want to tell you about it. Shall we go there? Okay, sure. You want to go to? A, I think I know what you did. Party? I, I <clears throat> the way that things come to me through your wife to my wife to me. Yeah. Sometimes I know what you're doing based on what your wife tells my wife. Mm-hmm. It's better that way. It's like <laughs> fourth hand information about you. Yeah. What did she tell you that we went to a pie eating pie eating and contest party? Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't a pie eating contest, right? No, nope, it was a pie eating and contest. That's different than a pie eating contest. Pie eating contest is how fast you can eat the most amount of pie. <laughs> That's not my idea of a good party. But nobody did that. Nobody did. So it was that. a pie baking contest. I, Rhett, I've told you, and I'll tell you again. Pie eating and contest. It was a pie eating and contest. Okay, so it's a, people were eating the pies. Yep. And then it was a contest. Yes. But it wasn't how much can you eat. Right. It's a pie eating and contest. It's literally what they like put on the RSVP. They no. called it a pie eating and contest because I think that's what I've called it. Not calling to give it. notes this early, but yeah. that's confusing. I'm call I've called it that. Like a pie making <laughs> contest. You know. A pie well, contest. It was a pie eating and contest party. Okay. So that I have arrived at being the best title for what it was. Because okay. we all showed up to eat pie, which there was a contest about what was the best pie across two different categories, savory, and you guessed it, sweet. Wow, savory pies. That's exciting. Uh-huh. Because no one ate you, dinner. You get dinner and you get dessert all in one go. That's right. Very smart. And and then it's a party. So how many pies did you make for it? I made a grand total of two pies. Are you taking responsibility for the pies that my family, your family made? brought two pies? Okay, all right. And you know what? I here's what I actually contributed. Okay, I brought Cool Whip and Ready Whip. Okay, uh, to give people options. No, to go on the pie that Christy made. She wouldn't. She had Ready Whip and Cool Whip. Well, I had. To, she worked all day. Her and Lando worked all day on their pies. What did Christ- you do while they were working Christy on the pies? Christy had an entry. I took a nap. <laughs> and then I woke up and I said, you know what? I'll go to Ralph's and get the ready whip. You, oh. don't, you don't have to do that. You've worked so hard on this pie all day. I'm going to swoop over and get the ready whip. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I should get Cool Whip. That's the original. Oh, you got it just in case. That's a smart, yeah. smart thing. When you've done nothing to contribute to the item itself and you've been sent to the store. Just go bonkers with options. You don't want to be the guy that leaves anybody hanging. Right. And um, Christy made a chocolate chess pie, mm-hmm. which was a Southern specialty. Now, if she, you eat she, it she gusses, made this before, before she had you? never made it before. It was not a signature of hers. If you eat it, Gus's fried chicken yeah, here in town, which I highly great, recommend, great thing. they have like this amazing chocolate chess pie. And do you know what makes it a chess pie? Um, because I would just strategy. always call it, I just call it chocolate pie, and then people say it's a chocolate chess pie, and I'm like, am I supposed to be it is different, playing like a, the game with it? No, it, I don't think it has anything to do with the game. The, the top of the pie gets a little. Turns into a checkerboard. The chocolate gets a little harder. Like chess gets harder when you actually try to play it. Okay. The top of the chocolate. As opposed to a chocolate pie, in my mind, is just chocolate pie with meringue on top. No crust on top. 
Well, no, there's no crust on top of a chocolate chest pie. Am I not describing this well? Oh, it's, it's crusty. It, yeah, it, it gets a little harder. It's on almost top. as if it's been flambéed. A little bit, yeah, yeah. And it um, tastes good. That's all I know. Oh gosh, it tastes so good. And then Lando made a apple pie with a bacon cheddar crust. Oh, so this is what category is that in? Right. This is cross category. I noticed that he entered it into the savory, which was a brilliant idea because there were only three other pies in savory. There oh, was, there was very a smart. Shepherd's pie, and then there was his pie, and then there was um, some sort of a asparagus quiche okay. thing. It was a risky move to go to the savory category. Right. I think it was the right move. Yep. But I think that. If I'm voting in that and I get to the apple pie, I'm kind of like, ah, is this a is this within the category? And so then I'm like hesitant to put it first. Right. So you probably got second place in that. And um, Christy had a lot more competition in this in the suite. There was all types of pumpkin pie. There was there was even a a um, a pumpkin flavored cheesecake and cheesecake cake. Okay. Pie. Cheese. As yeah. long as it ends with pie. Yeah. What makes a pie well, a pie? It, it was cheesecake, which is a pie. Yeah. Um, there was no other apple pie even in the sweet, so I think he would have been all right Ooh, in sweet. okay, that's But tough. there was also no other chocolate pie besides the one that Christy made. No and, chocolate pie? And, and the, How many pies are we talking about? Uh, I would say <clears throat> there was 11, there were like 18 pies total but but in four of them were savory so that leaves four any people. healthy pies no cuz you know that just got to yeah. be honest with you i know sometimes LA, that happens in happen. los angeles right and i i i'd venture to say that anytime a southerner enters into a cooking contest of any kind in the los angeles area they come in with a super high advantage because they're right. willing to put butter butter sugar Anything that can cause a heart attack mm. on the spot before Bacon you Bacon and cheddar. We're totally willing to do it without reservation. That's right. And so we come in with a distinct advantage. Maybe Midwesterners are like right behind <laughs> us on that. I don't want to, you know, shout out to the Midwest. You guys know how to put butter in something too, but not quite like we do in the South. I'm going to tell you what happened at this party, and then I want to open it up a little bit to just talk about it, the nature of it as a party. Okay. Um, everybody was eating, and it's fun because... You take like this little sliver of pie. You take like the smallest slice you can get yeah. because you want to taste Every 18 pie. pies. Right. And that's so much fun to just get a little sliver of pie and then go over here and get another sliver of pie. You're like remaking a pie on your plate. How many from pies? Slivers of other pies. Did you guys bring one pie per one pie. entry? Yeah. Wow, that's a thin. And how many people at the party? Um, I would say there, there might have been 22. Okay, wow. So we're talking little slices, and nah, you can't probably no, more than that. Maybe. No seconds. There were kids. <sighs> yeah, not eight, everybody eight did graders. every pie. Not everybody did every pie. Not everybody was fully committed. Yep. I I, I honestly didn't taste every single pie. There were okay. a few that I knew that you just knew you wouldn't like. It. Weren't vying for my vote because you did vote in the sweet category. You would like write your number down and you'd put it in that cup. And then you'd have you'd put your other vote in the savory cup. And I pulled the host aside and I said, "Now, I'm gonna help you out here. Mm. I don't know how you did this pie contest before Chrissy and I came to the neighborhood. <laughs> this was pre-pandemic, but now that we're here, I have a little. If if I may, I'd like to help you out. I'd like to help produce. Yeah, this, the this seems about right. The results of this pie. Now, what I didn't say was, I'm gonna host." The, right. the reading of the votes or anything. That's, that's your thing. I'm going to be your apprentice is what I told her. And I said, whenever it's time to tally the results, we, just, we need to go, we need to, sequ order. We need to sequester ourselves to, with the votes, and I'll tell you what we need to do. You know, this is a Price Waterhouse Coopers type thing, you know. Okay. Where the guy at the Gram Grammys has the, the suitcase, and it's the part of the Grammys that nobody listens to, where they're like certifying the votes or something, or maybe okay. it's o Oscars too. And did you feel that this advice was welcome? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, she was open to it. She didn't know quite what was going on. And um, <laughs> so we go back there, and I'm like, all right, I'm taking savory, you take, take, take sweet, and you're just going to lay out all the votes. 
and she and then stack all the votes by. Were there like, any collecting. any rules about not voting for your own family's pie? No. Well, because what about people with a lot of children? Mm, that probably right. Didn't happen, right. Though. Well, you got there's there's got to be a benefit to having a lot of children, and this is this can be it. Right. That and like if you work on a farm. Okay. You know, pie eating contests or pie tasting contests and farm work is the only reason to have a lot of children. Pie eating and contest party. Yeah, I'm having trouble accepting that, even though I wasn't there, because it, you got pie eating and contest so close, like pie eating. And then contest is so close to each other right. that if you say it too fast or I've had a couple of drinks, right. next thing you know, I'm eating all the pie thinking that that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's why you weren't invited. <laughs> yeah, right. So I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was like, and then when it, okay, she was like, now we know who's in contention for this thing in both categories and you need to pick up a straggler vote here, a straggler vote there, and then, when it, and then you need to pick up the top vote the second vote getter, top vote getter, and you need to engineer the order with which you are revealing the answer. I've watched enough Survivor to know that there is a best way to do this. So I got her to do it, and then I did it for the savory, and I gave him, and we put him back in the cup. Because you wanted to do a live vote count. Faced up, li yeah, because what I had heard was that in the pre-pandemic version of the party that we weren't invited to because we weren't friends with these people at the time. They just said, well, and the winner is so-and-so. And, -so. and yep. I was like, come on, come on. We got to make Do Jeff they even do third, third place, second place kind of thing? Nope, nope, nope. Um, and I don't believe in that. Second place is the, is the first loser. Oh, okay. So we went out there and um, I started playing some dramatic music. Were you I, DJing this I, party? I was playing some music. Yeah, they let me control the music at their house. Okay, it wasn't so, at my house. Uh, so, uh, just so I can just understand the complete setting here. Yeah. Um, w at what point when you showed up did you take over the music? Well, he wasn't playing music, and okay. you know, he knows that I like to play music. Okay. He was like, "What music should we play?" Tonight? Okay, so he invited this, and okay. I made a couple of suggestions, and then he was like hooking up to his Bluetooth, and I was like, "You just want me to." Do it, okay. And I, and I gave him the. He could have said no, but he said yes. And then I used that to my advantage, when right. it was time. I like I played some dramatic music and I got everybody's attention. And then I introduced Tara, the host, and um, in both senses of the word. And then she comes out with the two cups. Now this feels like a lot of added pressure for her because she probably wasn't expecting. She was like, "We're going to do it the way we've always done it. I'm going to read she the person." She was. She was so, totally. But she was ready. She was totally on board. Willing. Okay. Yep. Yep, she passed the test of friendship. Like, I mean, these people are are, are good friends of ours. Okay. It's like, I would, you know, with a great idea like this, if you pitch it to somebody and they're like, "Well, I don't want to," it's like, man, eh, okay, yeah, we're not friends anymore. I mean, it's just like, oh, that's it's a, just that's a risk you're willing to take. Well, I we're at that point in our friendship, mm. honestly. You know, you knew it would be well received. Yeah, I knew it'd be well received, but it's also like, um, you know, that's part of what makes friendship fun. Is being willing to step up and be a be a host, push the limits a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Test test the friendship. Yeah, yeah. She did a great job, you know. And everybody was super into it. Yeah. And what could have been like just an announcement that lasted a second, and then everyone was cheering and it was over. Maybe a couple of pictures were taken. This is a dramatic reading of votes. The first vote goes to pie number twelve. Who's pie number 12? And then oh, everybody's looking at pie, the person with pie number 12. And then we're like, okay, um, this is the shepherd's pie. Who is that? And it was, the, it was the father in the back. And then, oh, and now we've got this one. Who is this? And it was Lando's. So the savory came down to she would read one of the guy with the shepherd's pie, and then she'd read one that was Lando's pie. Okay. And it kept going back and forth between these two, now, and everybody was so into it. So the, so the sort of the opposite, uh, or like one thing, one caveat to this technique is that the person's pie who got no votes or very little votes, we now know exactly how many votes they didn't get. Right, <laughs> exactly. So like we don't only know yep. who Everyone was first, else is we shame. know who's last. Yep. If you want to think about it, and who got zero votes. Right, so I'm assuming that somebody in the savory got zero votes, and that person... Uh, one vote. 
One vote. Yep. Okay. So nobody even got, better because they got identified right. with the pie publicly, yep. and then we made yep. sure that they got no more votes mentioned. Right. And you remember that next time you participate. Okay. Yeah. Because shame is a good motivator sometimes. There you go. To make better pies. There you go. Did uh, how did that person respond? And what was their pie? It, it, was it the quiche? It actually it was another one that I don't even remember. It was, oh. it was a brown pie. You're saying it lost to quiche? Yeah. Wow. Whew. Okay. All right. And um, I don't know what to say about that. It came down to it, and you're losing to quiche in a pie contest. Lando actually won. He did. Yeah. He, he did. He, he paid off his uh, his decision to go into savory. And I said, he beat you know what? Shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie didn't have any garden peas in it. Oh, no, it didn't have. He he went peeless. Oh, you can't go peeless. His with wife, a shepherd's pie. And, and that's what I was telling everybody. That's, I was like, listen, yeah. you can't vote for this. There's no peas in the pot. And the wife was like, well, I, you know, I told him, I think he could go peeless. And I was like, well, that was your mistake. Yeah, that's not a shepherd's pie. That's somebody else's pie. Right. I don't know whose it is. Exactly. But a shepherd ain't gonna touch that with a ten foot hook. Whatever they have. Staff. Staff. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I would. Yeah, I, w I was basically doing a smear campaign against this shepherd's pie beforehand because I was trying to help Lando win. Of course, I didn't tell anybody that Lando's was the other pie. Oh, so you were I saying, think they knew what it. do you think about the peeless shepherd's pie? Yeah, I just kind of, it was a consider, hard it? smear campaign. So if it doesn't have peas in it, it's just got meat and potatoes in it? And carrots. Oh, you, went, you, got, you could do carrots and not peas? I know. You gotta have peas. To and the carrots, the carrots was a whole. It was a whole like souffle of carrot. Like it wasn't pieces of carrot. It was oh, like a whole. It was ground. It, it was, was a, a layer puree. Pure puree. It was a carrot layer. It was very good, but it, ne it needed kind of some green. It needed some green. Yeah. And of course, he added the pie crust because he was like, I think I'd be disqualified if I didn't put it in a pie crust. Yeah. Which I was like, you're right about that. So he got so close, but he lost to my son. Hmm. And then we move on to the sweet. Mm -hmm. And it came down to Christie's chocolate pie, and then the wife of the husband with the no peas, the one who said no peas. Well, this is a pie family. She had a frozen, um, what's that tangy green pie? A key lime pie. A key lime. One of your favorites. It might be the best kind of pie. But it was frozen-ish on purpose. If you can get a key lime to the top of a pie contest, that's a good key lime, because key lime can be a little bit polarizing. Yeah. I didn't love it, and of course I was lobbying hard against it. I was like, "It's so frozen. It's so green." Okay, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> first of all, I think you did a couple of good things here. I think you, I think you, ultimately you made this, from what I can tell. I mean, hearing it from you, yeah. you made this a better experience than it would have been otherwise. I did. I do take issue with the way that you got yourself involved in trying to sway the vote. So right. So I feel like you've disqualified yourself from ever being like a, a polling station worker or anything <laughs> like that. Because Good. It, you just can't, you can't be telling people, oh, this guy, this guy never pees. You know, I don't know what the, the right. political equivalent of not putting pee, peas into your pie is. A smear, you know. Christy got second place. And so then, it really came down to these two families. Yeah, it came down to these two families. Which, feels like, which, which we hate each other now. Well, it feels like that's the real story here. Is Christy that leaned two, over. These two pie families. She said, if I would have voted for myself, I would have won. She didn't vote for herself? Or it would have been tied, I guess. Why didn't she vote for herself? Exactly. That's what I said. You got to vote for... She should have said it in the... Did she vote like, for someone else? I was like, yes. She oh. voted for someone else? I was like, did you think your pie was the best? She was like, well, yeah. I just didn't feel like you I You don't even have to pie. think your pie is the best to vote for it. I'm sure, you know what? Brown pie voted for themselves. That's where their one right. pie came, <laughs> one vote came from. I like it. I like the brown pie. It was very good. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> you, uh, brown, you know brown pie voted for brown pie. <laughs> Why else would there be a vote? And there were so many votes. It was going back and forth. But it was very dramatic, you know? And then I, you know, I I hit into some We Are the Champions. And they took some photos. And then it was, then it was just... Just basking in the glory of everybody having pie. There's no real losers at a pie eating and contest party. Okay, we got to. Other than the, we got to work on the name. It's a great idea for a party. You're right about everybody that. bring a pie. It's a contest that nobody really loses, and it within the category of pie. pie, you've got a meal and you've got a dessert. And I we were telling him. 
Dude, thank you for bringing the shepherd's pie. You kind of saved us because you actually yeah. gave us dinner. I just don't think there was enough savory pies. I think that yeah. we got to work on that. Yep. Yeah, I think some people got to step up. I think next year more people will step up to savory because uh, there's more opportunity to take Especially the if people are not eating dinner. I mean, come on. Give oh, us yeah. some savory stuff. But that's a good idea for a party. Well, first of all, I love themed parties. And, I know you do. And uh, we've been talking about how I want to start doing more of these yep. at my house to like be uh, replace game night, which we had for years. Everybody, um, everybody brings a pie. There's no. Well, I don't think I can take this specific idea though. Well, I don't know if I can take pie contest. The only overlap in friends is me and Christy. I don't think and, you, you and can't I, go to two. Pie, you can't go to two pie contests in a year. I well, I think Christy, you're like, Christy and Lando might be like going into the pie circuit. So this would just be stop number two of just winning pie eating and contest parties all around town. You know. Well, eh? I, I mean. I'm having trouble coming up with another thing better than pie because you've got savory food and sweet. that goes across savory and sweet that everybody can it, it can have freedom of expression. And, and because it's not, it's a canvas, it's not like everybody make the best cannoli or something and then you're just, uh, I've eaten so many cannolis. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it's basically the same thing. Oh, this guy put peas in his right. cannoli. Like the quiche. Just goes to show you how far it can go, you know? I wouldn't have put asparagus in it, but it wasn't my pie. Mm. Yeah, I do. I mean, we went to a party, I uh, remember, early on, being out here, and it was the chili eating. It was a chili contest. Yep. Which is... That happens a that's, lot. That's fun. Chili, the chili contest is, is fun because... Yeah. yeah. You know, and again, you, you're going to have some dessert that's not part of the contest, but you're gonna eat a lot of different chili, and you can, you can eat twenty different chilies. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a close second. You you know something that was floated around in our friend group, but we never really nailed it. We never actually did it, and there was a lot. There was a groundswell of support for this, and we never followed through with it. Casserole night. Remember mm. that? Remember the talk of that? Yeah. A casserole party, because. Casseroles are like, it, it's, it can be pretty broad. It's pretty close to a pie. I don't think it's close to a pie, yeah. but it's more on the savory side. Like, I would venture to guess that you could unlock a whole type of savory pie by just putting a casserole in a pie container. But there's a lot of crossover. To go the other way, to have a casserole party, I don't know if, are there sweet casseroles? There can be. I mean, like if you put monkey bread a or a sheet cake. Yeah. Is a ca is in? I feel I, like no. we're getting into a hot dog no, as no, a sandwich no. territory here. No, no, but. no. That, but, but like, if you had like monkey bread in a in a in a casserole dish, as long as it's contained in a casserole dish, there's lots of desserts that are casserole yeah. dish. Yeah, yeah. There's probably a whole bunch about, of stuff we're not thinking about right now. You can. Why don't you take that one? Uh, casserole. Oh, we got to come up with a good name though. Um. People should, after everyone gets there, you like have the casserole call. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but there's got to be a play on words with casserole and okay. casseroling. No, casserolers. Um, we'll, we'll come up with it. Casserole eating and contest. Party. Yeah, there you go. That was it. That was what it was on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> yeah. So that that was that was it for me. That's how I kicked off my last weekend, and then like. Saturday and Sunday was just recovering. <laughs> just lots of naps and thinking about the pies. And Even though you did say you were napping while the, like the <laughs> yeah. pies were being made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to tell you about something unexpected that happened to me this weekend. Um, but first, we're going to tell you about... Uh, Cotton Candy Randy Santa Claus hoodie. It's Cotton Candy Randy Warhol as Santa Claus. We had a t-shirt, but now we have a hoodie. So, just in time for the holidays, commemorate it at mythical.com with that hoodie, all right? Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. This time of year can be a lot for a lot of people, right? right. You're wrapping up the year, you're gonna be seeing family, you're thinking about, oh, another year, what's gonna be different next year? And that transition, something coming to an end and something new beginning, 
Sometimes it can be exciting, but sometimes it can be um, a little anxiety inducing. Sometimes yeah, totally. some sadness can set in. Yeah, it can be a lot. And it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it, but therapy can be a bright spot amid all of the stress and change. Something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. We're huge advocates for therapy and want it to be accessible to everyone, so if you're thinking of giving it a try, start with BetterHelp. It's entirely online, it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ear. Ear Biscuits is supported by Chime. I'm throwing some gifts on my credit card. You know, it's that, it's that time to get some gifts, put them on your credit card. Yeah, you it know? sure is. I'm setting you up to talk about it. Noel, no matter what you're buying this season, Link, when you use the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can build your credit scores with on-time payments for everyday purchases. Plus, there's no annual fee, interest, or credit check to get started. Use it everywhere Visa credit cards are accepted and build credit using your own money. And with a Chime checking account, you can get paid up to two days early and with direct deposit. When you set up that direct deposit, sign up for Spot Me and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a debit card purchase or cash withdrawal that exceeds your balance. Chime also gives you access to over 60,000 fee-free ATMs easily found on the Chime app. Start building your credit. Open a Chime checking account with at least $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at chime.com slash ear. That's chime.com slash ear. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA, member FDIC. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Call 1 844 244 6363 for details. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payers. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Um, so, as is not uncommon, the weekend rolls around, yeah, and we just haven't, we just haven't made plans. Mm. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I really enjoy just kind of being at home. Yeah, you know, just like vegging it, out, giving I, yourself permission to. We were supposed to go out, check out with some friends on Friday night, but uh, Friday, I started feeling the tingle of a sore throat. Oh, you backed out. And then in the afternoon, I started, well, I had a headache on Thursday night. I remember telling you that. Thursday night, headache. Yeah. And then like, you kind of feel your eyes sort of like, something starts happening to your eyes. At least this is what happens to me. Like I'm like, is this an allergy? It could have just been allergies. I think it's called introversion. But it, it no, I, no, I enjoy hanging out with people, but I started feeling myself get sick, and so we kind of pulled the plug on it was, a, it was a last minute dinner that had been planned the night before. So it wasn't like, oh, we've been waiting to see, you know, it's friends that we see I bet you, pretty often. I bet you they were relieved too. And um, so, but then, you know, I rebounded because first of all, I went to bed at 9.30, which is your bedtime. There you go. On a Friday night. Damn. I slept for like 11 hours or something. It was just a full reset. I woke up it feeling did the like trick? a million bucks. And um, Well, you made the right call then. And Jesse was like, well, you wanna do something tonight? And I was like, yeah, but sometimes, and this is, we are so spoiled in, a, in being in a big city because there's always something going on. But right. sometimes you just feel like, well, you wanna go eat dinner? You wanna go to a movie? You still kind of default to these very common things that people do, right? Because a lot of things like, yeah. oh, I want to go to a museum or something. They all close at like five p.m. And if you didn't make plans, it's you know what I'm saying. Like a lot of stuff closes. I'm talking about the nighttime. What do you do in the nighttime? We don't go to. We're not club people. We don't no. club. No, you're not. And Jesse's like, um, Vulture Fest, <laughs> like the online magazine Vulture. Yeah. She's like. Oh, there's lots of interesting things happening in it. Vulture Fest. Okay. And, I mean, it's just, this is the kind of thing that we might go to that like, it like comes through uh, like a PR related thing. Like, oh, yeah, like you wanna, make an appearance at Vulture do Fest. You want to go to this thing. And so I, we don't typically do this kind this of thing. This is starting to make sense. Lincoln, you know, you said that you learned 
from Jesse, who talked to Christy, what we were doing over the weekend. Well, I got a text from Lincoln asking about a party that you went to, and he wanted to know if I was there. He all of a sudden Lincoln off because at college was, of what was very interested in, in in your weekend. So you've succeeded at piquing the interest of the collegiate-minded boy. Ah, uh. ma- ma- you know, man, guy. Yes, you're some which will make sense in a second. Um, so I've actually, I, I think I've actually recommended this particular guy on the podcast many years ago. Uh, Brian Jordan Alvarez is an actor and he had a bunch of like really, in, not like really well-produced YouTube sketches back in the day that I found very funny. Like he was really throwing himself into YouTube sketch. Okay. And we watched a couple of them you would remember if I showed him to you, and like he's very funny. And then he's gone on to he, you know, he was like, he was on Willing, like the reboot of Will and Grace, and he uh, was in that Megan. He was in the movie that we watched at my birthday party, the Megan movie. He plays like, oh really, the assistant to the person, the woman developing the the robot. He's in a, a number of scenes. Okay, not like a starring role, but um, again, so, don't tell me how it ended because I don't want you to spoil it. Did you walk out? No, I just don't remember. Oh. Um, you know, I was about to say, I, can, I remember you being in the hot tub the whole time. <laughs> so, so I. That's, that's I didn't the last remember, thing I remember, too. I didn't remember <laughs> you getting up. So, he, has, he did this thing during the pandemic where, of course, you know, he wasn't really working as much, where he's this incredible character actor and can do all these different voices. And he created this guy called TJ Mack. <laughs> and I, I'm just going to play like the, I think this might be the original video. With, with like, the with the filter face. He puts a filter face on it. And uh, and this is, and Lincoln loves this guy and like talks. And like Jesse now, Je- he's created a whole universe of multiple characters. Yeah. But the main two characters are this guy, TJ Mack, and then TJ Mack's wife. So <laughs> this is the introductory video. So yesterday I go to the TJ Mack and this is the first time I'm finding this place available in my city. <laughs> and I see all the deal. I see a Gucci underwear, I see a Calvin Klein underwear. <laughs> and I say, I've never been able to buy this for $30. So I go to different kind and they tell me, actually, this is half off. It's not even 30 It's $15 for three pair of Calvin Klein underwear. You ever heard of a better deal than that? <laughs> so I'm going to go to Marshall tomorrow. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so, and so he he started to be known as TJ Mack because he that's talked how he about says TJ, TJ Mack. And then, but he's got like the wife. He's got and the wife is played by him. He They're play, all him. he plays everybody. And sometimes he uses a filter, but then he also has like this rich Southern mom. Oh my! Which God. is just him in a wig, but then he has an Australian like weightlifter. He has this exchange student, and there's these ongoing stories for each one, like hundreds of videos, <laughs> depending on the character. I love it. Um, and and just so you, just so you know, like uh, because people might be like, "Oh, he's using this accent." Like I didn't meet, but I saw his mother. Uh, at this event, and his mother kind of talks like TJ Maxx. So this is like, th- he's getting these accents from his, like, this is his family. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is his background. <laughs> okay. If there's any question about that. Okay. Um, All right. Mama Alvarez sounds like that. So, but, okay. So then he does this thing where he starts, he just start. he's improving all this stuff. He improvs this song that's about sitting. Play that for you. Sitting, sitting is the opposite of standing. Sitting is the opposite of running around and sitting is a wonderful thing to do because you sit him. Sitting is the opposite of standing on your head. Sitting is the opposite of hanging from a barber. Sitting is a wonderful thing to do. I got one thing to say. I think that sitting is something that people say it is bad. But you know that sitting is actually good because you deserve to relax. It's kind of like a nap, it's kind of like something else, but it is actually just sitting, sitting in the opposite of standing. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he, so, he very clearly just puts the filter on and just like makes just goes stuff for it. up. It's great. So 
That so, so he's been getting popular Sitting. for this, but this one in particular, like if you just go on TikTok and if if you know, you know, and I'm we're late to the party if you know, right? But like this guy and that song got redone by so many people. There were like, you know, that you see those videos where it's like a chorus teacher with like a big room of people in there. They sing they sing that song like that's yeah. All these professional musicians like remaking it. And then like this guy did this version of it. Okay. <laughs> so many remixes. How, how many views is that? Only has well. This is just. This is on YouTube. On TikTok, this has millions. I'm just. This is just the YouTube clip that came up. I love that. And then, and now he's like writing his own. Like, first of all, that he makes was like, me so happy. They had him on like he was in Ty, like Time Magazine brought him to like the headquarters, and he did this whole thing. And he's been on a couple <laughs> of morning shows, and okay, uh, he's just constantly talking about this. And now he's writing songs that are like really well produced, and but still very very funny. Like you would, you know how sometimes people find something and they get popular for something, and then they just like the guy who made that video. Uh. A few months ago, there was this thing going around, and it was this like uh, homage to like Euro pop music, and it was a guy and a girl, and it went really big. And then the guy kept trying to redo it, and it got like, cringier and cringier each time. Mm. That's not what Brian is doing. Good. What he's doing is he's like so naturally funny, and he knows why these things are funny. He hasn't had one as big as sitting again. Well, anyway, Opposite back to Vulture Fest. Jesse's like. Brian Jordan Alvarez in conversation with TJ Mack and his wife. What? Live. And I was like, yes, I want to go to that. It was like 4.30 in the afternoon on a Saturday. You were sitting at the time. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I want to go to that. You know, we never take advantage of all these things that happen in the city. And, I, and, and then we started looking at the other things city. that were happening. All these things were sold out. Weird Al had something that he was doing right after it, and then those the please don't don't destroy guys the yeah. the three guys that got picked up by SNL, the sketch guys from YouTube, like they've got a new movie, uh, that's got Conan in it. There there was a special screening of that. I was like, let's go to. They were all sold out. Everything else was sold out, but this was not sold out. You had to buy an individual ticket. Individual each. ticket. It was like seventeen bucks, and we go to the we go to this thing, and you know it's like it's like down there at the. Uh, NYA Studios in Hollywood. We've been to something there before. So there's kind of like this grassy, fake grass area where there's like some vendors. Uh, uh, shout out to Holy Grail Donuts, I think it is. Well, I'll confirm that. Just make sure that's right. Uh, fans who came up and gave me and Jesse some free donuts. Uh, they're, they're fans of the show. And, you know, some like vendors selling stuff and... You know, drink tickets and that kind of thing. I'm like, oh, we're like at a festival. Like we never do yeah, this. Like just as authentic, just people in Los Angeles. And then we go into were you, the, were you were you fitting in with the demo? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, 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 what did you expect? I mean, I was probably older than most people, if that's what you're asking. Well, when you but said it was like Weird Al was there and please don't. It's not. It wasn't just a TikTok. No, no, it, it was very much sort of like a curation of things that are actually funny. Okay. A, as, yeah, yeah, yeah. as determined by the L.A. crowd. You know what I mean? Like that, mm -hmm. which is a good place to be. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I mean, they're not going to call me and you if that's what you're asking. <laughs> I mean, I think we're funny, well, but I'm just saying. I, I think we're funny, but you know what I'm saying. You need to use those TikTok filters. So uh, we go in there and sit down, and it's like 150 people. Yeah. And I'll show you a video of what he did, and because this is the first time he's ever done this. this. So this is what I posted on my my story. But he was on he was on stage, and he's just facing the other way doing it. He's just facing the other way. So he's got he's projecting his phone onto the thing behind it. Yes, and you know, and then he's got like uh, let's see. He, this is like this. To encourage me so this is exchange to student. Just be in a stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and he's taking. Kind of like he was doing a good job. He's taking questions from the audience, and so it's all impromptu. And, he, and there's. And he's always his back is always yeah. to the audience. So what he did, audience, he came out and he, he sits down with 
the moderator. Because he didn't as have, himself. He didn't. By the way, he didn't have to face away from the audience. Yes, he it, did. Because it was the right choice. It was the right choice, but he didn't have to for technical reasons. He did it for comedic reasons. Well, because you don't want to see. Well, so th- he comes out because his phone's captured, and he's looking at his phone. He's not looking at the screen. R- but okay, so he comes out. He sits down as Brian with the moderator, and the bit is that he's the manager of TJ Mack and and everyone. Okay. Um, he's been kind of working with, with them. And yeah. he, he's doing a super tongue-in-cheek, right? And he's yeah. kind of explaining, like, we, we haven't done this before or whatever. Right. And he's like, oh, he's ready. He's backstage. He's ready to go. And so he leaves, and then he then he takes his phone, and then he comes out with his phone facing the other way. And then people, the crowd of people who were there were so, were the, they're like me and Jesse, people who just sit there together in bed and watch right. him do all these characters, right? Yeah. And... The joy on people's faces when, I, like, when he came it. out. It just makes me so happy to it, watch this so, guy. It was so niche. Like, yeah. Even though he's gotten really popular. Like, he's, it's so like side-splittingly funny. Mm. And then he starts singing the songs and everybody knows the words. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm, you want to talk to my wife? And like he brings the wife out. And then they're like, and he was like, you want to talk to anybody else? And they're like, exchange student. And so he leaves and he comes back. And some of them he has wigs on and some of them he doesn't. It's just a filter. And then he, there's one that... He comes back out and he's about to do it and he realizes that it's a voice filter. He's like, oh, I realize I can't do that because this one requires a voice filter. <laughs> he says, ah, oh, let me see if I can do it anyway. And he like made a joke about how he was really hoarse. So it's like an hour, the whole show? Yeah, yeah. And so he was like, listen, this is the first time. And then kind of at and he's like, this is the first time we've done this. DM me and let me know if you have any feedback. You know, because he's like workshopping this thing. That's cool. To see. And people are like, what do you think about the fact that this is the thing that you've gotten really popular for when you've got this serious acting career. And he was like, I love the fact that this is the thing that I've gotten popular for. This is, you know, wonderful. Uh, that's great. Anyway, um, I don't know. I believe in this internet thing. And this is the reason why. Well, it was funny because it. W- one of the things that it happened for me was, I was like, oh, not, it, it, this is what it must feel like if you if you're a big fan of like Good Mythical Morning, as it's, an example, and then you go to a live show and we do something that only the people who are in this world, this mythical world, can really appreciate it. Yeah, and you're and like I haven't been in a in a I've been to concerts and stuff like that, but being in a thing where it's just like oh yeah, everybody knows why this this thing is funny. And this is something that I can tell my friends about, and they might know about it, but they probably don't. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a good feeling. It made me think, ah, oh, we need to do that again. Yeah, it's. You know um, what I'm I think it's it's good to be on uh, to experience that from the other side, because like we're like we've talked about before. It's like we we weren't like we're not really contributing members of fandoms, right? You know, so we don't. We don't have the community, the online community interactive experience that, like, you actually, you actually find yourself a part of. You gonna join his fan club? You gonna you? Did well, you DM him? I do want to DM him to tell him. I like, think this is your version. What of I what I thought about it, but I kind of just did. I I have I have some ideas for like how because he was you know. First of all, I love the facing away from the crowd because you're seeing it and he's like dancing and you're like, that's the guy doing it, but I'm interacting with the screen. And then there's a couple of times yeah. where he, he, the character sees himself on the screen and kind of looks at himself and smiles. He was discovering all this in the moment because he's very quick like that. Um, but I have a few ideas for, for like, you know, how to, make, how to blow it up even bigger. Okay. You want to... No, I'm just. I, You're I'll, gonna DM I'll him. I'll DM, DM him. <laughs> okay, Lincoln was impressed, man. Lincoln was impressed. Well, the th- well, the thing Jesse and I said as we left, it's up. like he's got the inside joke with his with his. Oh, like, so the roommates. fact that they're into it, yeah, yeah. Like he, he was like me and this guy were like really close friends now because we always use this guy's voice when we talk <laughs> to each other. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's the, why I said your som because that's what he talked right. about his wife in som. <laughs> um. But the thing I told Jesse, I was like, listen, I'm not great at planning, doing things, but we live in a place where there's always something to do. And I'm always, I, I'm going to tell you, if you plan it, I'm going to be up for it. Because, you know, we met, Why not? we met some people, met, there was a number of GMM fans that, that 
I met, but I connected with them, not as them being a fan of GMM, but them being a fan of this thing that we're both fans of. And that was a cool way to connect with people versus just somebody who's just a fan of what we do. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is, oh, this is a cool way to meet people, people of common interest. I know it sounds, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, okay. but I'm just saying if like, if you, you, if, if you go to, um, because it was more niche than like going to a concert. Like, oh yeah, we all love Jason Isbell. Yeah, okay, yeah, all, all right. fifteen thousand of us right. here, the Greek or whatever, is different. Yeah, than the, than this thing. I want to let's talk about this this AI pin thing. Okay, you want to talk about it? I want to talk about it because you teased it, and um, I don't know what I think about it. What's it called? Uh, it's called the AI pin. That's by Humane is the company. So you probably have heard about this thing. It looks like an like an iPod shuffle that's just attached to your hoodie or wherever you want to put wherever you'd want to like pin an iPod shuffle on your person. It looks like that. And if you have the but time it, and kind of like a l miniature calculator with no buttons. Almost looks like a miniature like scale that you would step on. Yeah, it's like a it's like, like, like a weight, weight scale. Um, if you have the time, I would encourage you to go and watch the like 10 minute presentation that this company put together for the thing because um, it's strange. It is so strange. It's the way that they chose to like go the, about doing it. I guess it's like a cr the creators or creator and like upper like marketing executive or some sort of type of executive. And it's like, and there's no pomp and circumstance to it. It's it's almost like a rehearsal for how to talk about it. It's very low energy. Very low energy. But in it, like a mesmerizing way that you're like, and I, again, they're one not, of those things. Do definitely you, not trying too hard. I don't know if this was intentional. I don't know if they're like lulling, lulling me into something. I mean, at one point I was wondering if they were AI. I wonder if AI wrote the script. But the idea behind this thing, just in general, is that this is supposed to replace your phone, right? So it is this little pen that you can interact with via voice, but also it projects a laser sort of interface onto your hand, just like a little projector. Like if you could imagine it was a little projector and like very, like just a few colors, not, I guess they could probably do video, but everything was sort of like a digital display of a clock or whatever. It was like monochromatic. It was blue, blue text. Yeah. On your hand. And then while it's on your hand, you make these little gestures to like, oh, if you're listening to music, you can like change the volume or go to the next track, or you can do little things with your fingers right. to like change what app you are accessing because it's all these like integrated, it's not really apps, it's just kind of all integrated AI that's using, it's using AI as a platform for you to be able to access all kinds of information, to be like, hold a book up in front of it, and it's like, oh, where can I get this book on, how much is this book online? Uh, $28, buy this book, and it'll just buy it. Right, I mean, there's nothing from the demonstration that really shook me up that was like, oh, this is, this is amazing. But what was the one thing we were like, oh, we could use that? It was more of like a business, like keeping, was it keeping notes? I can't remember. There was one part where we perked up. Oh, it was, tell me what, give me a summary of my emails. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And you know. The, the, or a I, summary of my texts or, or whatever, yeah. Give me a summary of everything from my inbox, basically. And it was as if someone had read your entire inbox and they just said, well, Jimmy sent in the proposal, and Tammy uh, followed up with the opportunities for your dinner. It, yeah, later Mark this wants week. to get sushi or whatever. And it's so it, it was. It was like you, an assistant, just kind of taking you through your day, just kind of combing through all of the crap that people sent you, like overnight. That was, that seemed pretty smart, and I'm I really like the idea of, like I said, I'm, I'm getting rid of like having a laptop or ever typing, I like the idea of getting rid of a phone entirely too. And, and just have a screen. But I don't know about this, getting rid of the screen. And then I've got the screen on my hand as a projection. Uh, well, and I think uh, this is where the, the question of 
what actually can you do? With, well, there's a number of things running through my mind. First of all, I have to imagine that the general response is negative, right? I, I just think that we're in a we're in a part we're in a phase right now where <clears throat> I mean, first of all, like they couldn't get those uh, glasses, glass? not the Google glasses, but more more recently the Meta glasses that are like the Ray Ban Meta partnership, which is like a cool looking pair of glasses, but it's like a video camera. Yeah, and the main reason is privacy, right? That's the main thing people have have responded to is this is a privacy issue because you're constantly recording everything. And it says that you're not. It's not constantly listening like a Siri or a Alexa. But if it's voice activated, it has to be at least somewhat listening. I mean, how could you do voice activated if it wasn't listening? I don't it's know. gotta be listening. And then, it, to me, it is like a wearable. It's like a body cam. Siri plus a body cam. And but and then whenever you interact with it, it is depending on your task. It's it's interfacing with a certain like the version of AI that is most pertinent to help is I, is what I was under the impression. Well, so it's not just like okay, it only interacts with Chat GPT. I think it uses Chat GPT as its framework. But ChatGPT with the right plugins can go into all kinds of applications. Mm -hmm. I think the most significant part of this is that, right? Because if you think about what happened with ChatGPT, uh, the average person, of course, knew about it. Right. And maybe the average person, maybe not the average person, like the slightly more interested person actually signed up for it and like used it, right? I'm in that category. Like I have ChatGPT. I've used it for a number of things to summarize text i've asked it i've asked it different questions that i could probably have just done a google search on but it's not a but i haven't done this it's thing. not been convenient enough for me to do that it hasn't gone the next step to be integrated into these other things right, right. and the thing about it unless the interface is severely simplified and people don't have to think about it and make these connections themselves it'll never actually be integrated into society so this is like an effort to be like, hey, you're not really thinking about how this is working. You're just asking it questions and showing it things, telling it to remember things. And then it's supposed to also, to, oh, you're in this part of town. I know you like this kind of food. Oh, you're, you're, you're 200 yards from that sushi place you like. And it's that time of day. You haven't had lunch yet because another thing they show on the video is it like telling it, like he holds up almonds in front of it and it's like how much protein is in this? And it's like... 12 grams. Right. You know, so, but so there's definitely this dystopian weirdness that I think people are going to be super wary of, right? Mm -hmm. But is, is it just inevitable? Is it is it inevitable that it's all going to get integrated in some way? Or are yeah. we just going to basically be like, no, we don't, we don't want that to be what being a human is? It's, it's inevitable. It's gonna, you know, anything that makes life easier and more convenient, it'll just creep in. And then you'll, you'll, it, I mean, look at how many people are involved in online banking. You know, it's like when we were coming up in, in college and you started like, well, logging, putting your bank account information into a website and like looking at your banking online and God forbid getting so, like, all someone Something. needs is your password and they can take all your money? Like, we definitely said that. Yeah, so that. all of that stuff, there's a high level of trust now because of the convenience factor. The thing that's getting me is, okay, they're like first to market to introduce like an, a, an electronic assistant that connects with, connects with AI. But like the series and the Alexas of the world are going to start interfacing with not just the internet at large, but using via AI tools. I mean, it's hard to it's imagine happening more and more every week. It's anything just going to be obsolete. This, anything about this that would be a true phone replacement. Like that's the that's the part that I have a difficult time because people are going to want that screen. They want the screen. Cuz the screen can give you right. this high quality video interface exactly. that I mean, I like the I like not having those interfaces. I would like to have less screen in my life. But if I can just ask 
my phone these things and it can send me updates. I mean, you've already got the Apple Watch. You've got smart watches that are kind of doing the same thing, right? An Apple Watch with the right integrated AI, Coming. how is it really different? It's the one thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have a camera that's recording what you're seeing, which is, again, this big sticking point, which I completely understand. They said that they're, they have a, um, like a, a light that comes on kind of like on any old camcorder. So if you see the red light, you know you're being recorded. Right. So it's a courtesy light. But, yeah. Any, any I was watching enough. a movie. Um, I don't know if it was a movie or a TV show. I can't remember. This past week. Well, was there only one of them? Week. And was it long? Yeah, that's where I can't remember. <laughs> but it was okay. an it was a older woman. And when I say, uh, oh, no, I know what it was. Uh, when I say older, she was older than the people she was interacting with. It was that... Uh, that Netflix Jennifer Lawrence mo r movie, romantic comedy, that is a little bit awkward because hard feeling, no hard feelings. Yeah, because she's like playing you, a thirty-two year old. Oh, you called Jennifer Lawrence an old woman? No, no. Well, that's, that's kind of the joke of the movie. She's thirty-two. Oh. oh, yeah. And she is in the movie. She is. I don't know how old she is in real life. And she's basically being paid by these parents yeah. to have sex with their nineteen-year-old son to get him to come out of a show. Uh, uh, questionable premise. It's a little uncomfortable, uh, I, admittedly. I didn't really understand that that was exactly what I was getting myself into. Um, so I don't know whether or not I recommend it. But what I will say is there's a scene where she's going into this party that's got a bunch of, you know, 18 and 19-year-olds. Yeah. And she's doing some things that are embarrassing, and everyone is filming her. Like everything that she says and everything that she does, somebody's got a camera on her. Which is kind of the way, I mean, they're making fun of this trope, right, of Gen Z basically shooting yeah. everything. Like, something happens, everybody breaks their camera out. I just, is the privacy thing, I know the privacy thing is a concern for people who are like our age, which basically is Gen X, and I know the privacy thing is a little bit of a concern for millennials. Does Gen Z really care? I mean, do... That, the, if the, I the mean, biggest certainly thing, less and less. If so the, we see a pattern. Because I mean, and also it's kind. It seems to me, I'm saying this as a person in the U.S. This privacy thing is a big thing in the U.S., but in a lot of other places in the world. I mean, in Europe, you've got this CCTV. Like everything, you go outside and you're basically on camera, right? And I'm not making an assessment about uh, whether it's good or bad. I'm just saying that. But they're it living. Just seems with it. that people just don't care as much. There seems to be this inevitability that everything that I do, anytime I interact with a person it's going to be captured. And it's kind of the way that life is anyway. I like, can make, it, I can I make I a positive you, spin. You, you know? can remember, your your brain is remembering it, but you but the fact that it can be completely uh, broadcast to somebody else. But then if it can easily be faked, if in five years I can create a video of you doing anything I want you to do that is indistinguishable from <clears throat> a video of you actually doing something, what is the point of the privacy at that, you know? I don't know. I just don't want to have to worry about where I'm going to put this thing on my blouse. Mm, you know, it's okay. like, it really got me when he started talking about like, and there's different clips, different types of clips, and here's a really low profile clip if you're wearing, say, a silk blouse. <laughs> I'm like, what? Now I got, I got to worry about that? It's like, I think I'd rather just have a, a wristwatch you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, the silk blouse shouldn't have brought that up, man. That, I'm out. The point of the putting it on the lapel seems to be the field of view and the hands free interaction. Even though, yeah. I saw a, a new commercial for the Apple Watch, and now you can do this. Yeah. You with can the touch Apple your, Watch. Touch and your it, finger and, it does and thumb. Something. It's, it's, yeah. You can assign that action. Yeah. I it, don't know what it's right. It just knows it, it knows that you're like, touching your finger. It can kind of feel like the haptic. I'm not gonna say what it's feeling, but it does it does pick up on it. I don't know. It's this is it's an interesting thing to talk about right now because I feel myself wanting to pull back a whole lot from I just I you know, I find myself sometimes and I realize I've been just scrolling through 
TikTok. I mean, this is, I'm sure this is a relatable experience. And I'm like, I, get, I just gained nothing. I lost time. I'm trying to pull back I, from more like you know, connection. I don't do internet. it that often. And, and I still have, like, the, whenever I start looking at TikTok, it's the thing that gets me to stop more than anything is just like, it's like coming to. Yeah. Like, what? It, you are hypnotized it's when like you're, you're doing you're, it. And then you're like, what, what have I gained from this? Like, Nothing. What am I looking for? It's like just observing. It's really the first time that I've been pulled into it. I don't think it ever happened with with uh, Instagram until Instagram started copying TikTok, of course. Mm, yeah. And so, like, I'm very late to this experience, but I'm like, oh, this is this is what everybody talks about. The hypnotic, I'm clearly looking for something, but I cannot articulate what it is but i'm very much searching for it like i just can't i can't wait to find it and it's it's very animalistic and so it's a bit disquieting it it's disturbing well it's tapping into to like, your your yeah i don't like i don't mean networks basically. and and it just and i just feel like i've just wasted up oh, there's 20 minutes yeah, so I just don't know how these this technology fits into that. I'm reminded of my resolution at the at the top of the year. It's like on my phone less, pet my dogs more. Like whenever I'm sitting down, except on the toilet, even when I'm on the damn toilet, Jasper's coming in there like clamoring up my. You don't lock the door. I let him in. Oh, okay. Because I don't want him peeing or pooping somewhere in the house. When, While you're doing it. Why, yeah, like, you don't, don't take you a, get any ideas. Don't take any cue from me. Stay in here with me so I can keep an eye on you. You got to keep an eye on that little possum all the time. And so, yeah, he's, I pet my dogs, pet my dogs more, scroll less. And I think that there's definitely, th I think that there is definitely the potential that we collectively, rebel against any further technological integration, right? I, I, but here's the problem with that. They'll be, what if we decide as a culture, like we're, we're just like, this is bad for us. It'll like, never happen. We, we can't take this. I mean, we're already experienced, when you talk about that scrolling through TikTok, the reason that it's so hypnotic is because we're just not made to interact with that much information. We're not supposed to know everything that's happening all over the world right now, everywhere. Like our brains are not meant to take in that much information. So to the, know the worst things that are happening right. everywhere on earth, I can just look into this little window and I can find all of it. Like your brain's not made for that. So what if we just decide like enough evidence comes out that's like, we, do, we need to do less of this. We need to create an environment that is more like the environment that we come from. And we need to use technology to enhance our lives, but not just make everything super convenient. It'll be some sort of some government people, thing in, in Nor Norway. But the thing is, is that like the Norwegian will government do it, will will do it. Well, what I'm getting at for is prisoners in we, Sweden. Well, or no, we may. There's you never know what's going to happen. We may collectively, but then there's going to be a certain percentage of people who are like, well, we've got all this technology, and they're going to become like superheroes. Do you know what I mean? They may have miserable lives, but they'll know everything that there is to know at any given moment. And we'll be like, is it gonna create this like cultural divide between the people who are tapped in and the people who are tapped out? Let's find out. We'll be there for it. I do have a recommendation that is somewhat related to this. You know, sometimes you go down a, a, a TikTok rabbit hole and you do get rewarded with something. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is my rec baby rec baby one, two, three, four this okay. week. I, w I invite you to search um, forest animals cozy aesthetic. And um, I found this one series of images. I took a screenshot here so I could show it to you while my phone's off. Um, this is from somebody with a bunch of emojis and the name Spence. And they, they said, this is so nostalgic. It's just forest animals like cartoon images of forest animals cozy in their dens, but then their dens are like, it's like Wes Anderson cutouts of trees and underground layers, but they're all like, it's like bears and raccoons like 
and foxes just like snuggled up in their human beds with their human rugs and it's very storybook-ish, mm -hmm. but it's a very specific type of nostalgia. Is it AI? From our childhood. Uh, I don't think so. Because it literally could I think it's just, easily be. It's just, oh yeah, it's just an, it's an, aesthetic, it's an aesthetic that maybe people are emulating illustrations of it now. And that'll make you happy. So. Does that hypnotize you? It hypnotized me. I saw this and then I had this feeling of cozy nostalgia and then I went to sleep. Mm. And I didn't have, I didn't have a sense of coming to. I had a sense of drifting off into a storybook Neverland. Did you dream about being a bear inside of a tree? I don't remember, maybe, hmm? probably. Forest Animals Cozy Aesthetic. You're welcome. Well, never forget that you can join the conversation with us using hashtag Ear Biscuits, mm -hmm. but you can also leave a message, a question, an observation, a contention at one eight 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 earpod one So let us know. We'll talk at you next week. Hi, so I am a teacher and I just thought I'd share a fun story from my day today. We had a student catch a moth in the hallway, brought it into our classroom, and all of my boys' reaction, they're in sixth grade, so about 12-year-olds, was, let's take our shoes off and throw our shoes at the moth. So I had about 15 boys launching their shoes all around the room because that is how you take care of a moth in the classroom. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.